I hope you're all well. So today I'm going to show you how you can create the split pop-up frames. I love doing these. They don't have to be a frame. You can do a letter to go in a frame. You can do a card. But to get that split pop-up 3D effect, they seem really daunting, but I promise you they're not as scary as they look. We're going to start nice and easy. So we're going to go to images and we're going to get a star. So you will find it easier to work with outlines. So something that has already got an outline or something with a possible outline you can create will make your life so much easier creating these. So this one here is absolutely perfect. You could do it with one like that. You could even do it with one like that. We're going to get this one as well. And we're going to use this one. So let's insert the images to our canvas. So we're going to work with this one first. And as I say, working with something that already has an outline or you can create an outline makes your life so much easier with these. So this is really simple with the stars. So I'm just going to go to shapes and I'm going to get a square and we're going to create matchsticks if you like so that we can slice into our star so that when we cut it out on cardstock it's not just going to fall away and be a complete cutout. The point of these pop-ups is that you keep them intact in your cardstock so that you can create a 3D effect. When you're making your slices, you want to make sure you're not making them really small in width because you are going to be changing the sizes of these depending on what you're creating. So sometimes you may want it to be big, sometimes you may want it to be small. And if you do it at this size and you then reduce it right down, our star or whatever it is we're doing will get closer and closer. So if you haven't created a wide enough slice, as you reduce your star down, you are actually going to end up putting it back together. So I'm going to make the width of mine 0.2. 0.2, 0.3 works really well in inches. And of course, if you want to change to centimeters, you can. You just come up to our three lines, go to settings, and you can change from imperial, which is inches, to metric, which is centimeters, and vice versa. So I'm going to duplicate this. So I've got five of them. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to place them first. So I want them to go on each of these joins. You may find you need to play around. You may need to rotate them, but just come and get them so that each of those joins is going to have a slice going through. I'm then going to hide my star. So I'm not moving it. I'm hiding it. So if I go to my layers panel and I click on the eye, it hides it, but it doesn't change the position. So if I'm doing something like this, where I want everything to keep in their position, I've placed them rather than moving them. If I hide them, when I bring them back, they're still in the exact same position. Now you can only slice two things at a time. So rather than slicing these individually, all I'm going to do is highlight and I'm going to weld them together so that they go from five layers to one layer. So rather than five individual cuts, Design Space now sees this as one cut. Even though we're cutting five times, because we've welded, we're only cutting once. So if I bring my star back, I can then highlight my slice option becomes available and I can slice. If I then remove those slices out the way and delete them, I've now created my 3D pop-up star. As simple and easy as that. So if we play with this one, the first thing I want to do is just change the color because it's quite hard sometimes to see in black. And I'm going to get my shapes again and a square. I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to make again the width 0.2 
and I'll keep playing with the height. I want it to be quite small in height. And then I'm going to put the lock back on. So I actually need 10 of these. So I'm just going to keep duplicating. So exactly the same as before, I'm going to come in and place them. Now you want to make sure because we've got inners going on here that we are not actually slicing into the other star. So if you are going to create these uh, kind of bridges, if you like, or gaps, you want to make sure that you're only slicing the area you want to. So make sure you don't overlap into another area. Now I'm doing these all at the same time. In fact, I'm gonna struggle with that one. So let's do them a star at a time. So this is where I want it for the outer. So all I'm going to do is hide that star in my layers panel. I'm going to highlight and weld these together so they become one layer. I can bring my star back. I can draw around and slice. I can then delete those sliced out areas. So now I'm going to come and place these ones. Now if your slice areas, your gaps or your bridges, I don't know what we call them, if they overlap it's not an issue but what we don't want is overlapping into other areas of our image. Again I can hide my star, I can weld this together bring my star back highlight and slice and there we go how pretty does that look so again we're going to get that lovely 3d pop-up effect with this one and then exactly the same for this one we're going to get a shape a square unlock it change the width to 0.2 and again, I can come in and start placing them. And they're gonna overlap in the middle of the star, but again, that's absolutely fine because I'm not actually going to, there's nothing for me to affect, so it's not an issue. Obviously, if my star had a middle piece, I wouldn't be doing it like this. I can hide my star, highlight, weld, bring my star back and slice. So nice and easy to do stars, not taxing at all and they look really pretty. This one, this purple one, I'm very excited to see how that looks. So next we're going to do some butterflies. So if we go to images and we search for butterfly, the easiest way to do this is to choose images which again have an outline or you can create an outline. When I say an outline, I mean an outline or a border. So this one will work really well, as will this one and this one. We can use that one. There's a lot in Design Space you can use actually. Even one like that we can do. And this one here, we'll just get a few more and then that will be plenty. So this one, if you look at the layers panel, you'll see, and you can see just by looking at it, we've got a complete border going all the way round and that's gonna make life so much easier. So if I ungroup my butterfly first, and I'm gonna hide that back layer and I'm just going to weld these together. I then have two layers. So if I bring that back layer back, I can then highlight and slice. And you'll see we then end up with that outline. However, if we were to cut it like this, it would still cut as a solid shape. So I'm going to go into my shapes and I'm going to get a circle. I'm going to unlock my circle and I'm going to make the shape 
of the body of a butterfly. And I'm going to do it there because I want to keep those antenna. So I'm just going to highlight and slice. And I can then delete the sliced areas. I'm going to go to shapes and I'm just going to get a square. And I'm going to rotate my square slightly and then make it smaller. I'm going to place it over my antenna bit and I'm going to highlight and slice. So if I want my circles but I don't want them to completely cut out, I can get my shapes and let's get a square. And again, I can create my matchstick. I can't think of what else I would call this. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to create a line going through those circles there. If I hide my butterfly, I can just weld those two together, bring my butterfly back, highlight and slice. I also want to create a little head as well. So again, shapes and circle. I'm going to duplicate that circle and just change the color so we can see it better. Make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to highlight, align and center and then slice. So I create a cut out circle. I can bring this over to my antenna and then I can highlight and weld. Now if I cut that out as it is, I'm going to lose the head. The antenna obviously going to be cut out anyway, but let's say I want the head to kind of be whole if you like. So if again I go and get a square. and I create another matchstick. I can then place that, highlight and slice. So that's my first butterfly. So if we look at this one, this one's nice and easy. We've got four layers here. So we've got the outline layer at the back and then we've got three other layers. So if I ungroup it, and I just hide those three layers, I can see which one has the most detail, which is that first one. So the other two I can actually delete. I'm going to highlight and slice. I can remove those. So I've now got that outline. If I go to shapes and get a circle, again, unlock it and create a kind of body shape. I can then highlight and slice. So I just want to take those little tags off. So all I'm going to do is just come back in. I can do that side first. So just highlight and slice. And there we go. There's that butterfly all ready to go. Again, this one, nice and easy to do. We've got two layers. So if I ungroup and I simply highlight and slice, I've then created that outer shape. If I go to my shapes and get a circle and create a body, I'm then preventing it from being completely cut out. So there we go, there's that butterfly. Once you start to understand, it, it becomes a lot easier. So really you're just working with two layers. So this one's got lots of layers. So again, if I ungroup it, and when we ungroup it, it'll always come to the top. You'll see there's actually another layer there which is hidden. And that's my 
shadow layer. So if I look at each of these layers and I can hide them to see which one's got the most detail and it is that black layer. So if I get rid of all of these because I don't need them, exactly the same highlight and slice. I can get rid of those and then I can literally just come in. I could do a straight line if I wanted to. And in fact, let's do a straight line. I can unlock that. I can change my width. Highlight and slice. And there we go. So next we're going to create some flowers and there's really two ways to create the flowers. There's either to use an image like this one or to use the other method which I'm going to show in a minute. So this again is using outlines. You'll see we've got a lot of layers here so if we ungroup it and we hide that yellow layer. We don't need the black layer at all, so we can just delete that. If we weld those green pieces together, they become one layer. Bring the yellow layer back, and all we're going to do is highlight and slice. We can get rid of the two green layers. We don't need those. And then that leaves us with these two layers. So this is the layer we want. So I'm going to delete this one. We've got those cutouts, but they're solid. So again, we're going to lose those as they currently are. So if we go to shapes and we get a circle, I'm going to unlock it and I'm just going to create a little petal shape. And I'm going to bring that over to each of my petals so I can duplicate it and then rotate it and I can just place them all around each of those so I'm creating that gap again. I'm then going to hide my yellow flower. I can weld those together so they again become one layer. Bring my flower back and then highlight and slice. So now because I've created that gap, they are not going to just fall out of my cardstock. But I can really play with this. So if I duplicate it and I go to contour and I hide all contours, that will leave me with one of those petals. So I can really build this if I want to. So I could add that into there, duplicate it and then just keep rotating it and really having a play with how it looks. Once I'm happy I can highlight everything and I can then weld it together. And the reason why I'm welding is just because it then becomes one solid image. The other way to make some petals is if you go to shapes and you get a circle and we unlock it and we're going to create that sort of shape, a petal shape. We can duplicate it and I'm just going to change the colour to red. I can then create petals that way so I can decide kind of how deep or thick or however I want them to be. So let's duplicate this one and we'll duplicate it again. So we've got three different ones. So if I do this one first, all I'm going to do is slice and I've then got my petal shape that way. This one, let's make it kind of deeper. So slice and 
and then this one let's do that way but I can also change those so if I then duplicate that one and unlock it I can completely change the way that that looks so really it's completely up to you so I could have it looking like that if I wanted so I can weld that or attach it I can work with this one so let's duplicate that I could go for something like that and then weld it or attach it together there really is endless possibilities with these I'm going to ungroup and I don't want the rows and the horn I'm just going to amend slightly so I'm just going to use my contour just to take out those bits there and I'm going to duplicate because I want the ears so I'm going to contour out the horn on this one And then on this one, I can contour out those ears. Now, because of the way the ears are, it's going to cut out these, but I'm going to end up with this kind of flap here. So I am going to end up with 3D ears, which is really cool. And I can then start placing my butterflies and flowers and all of those wherever I want them. And you can add flat images into it as well if you want to. There's absolutely no right or wrong with this. Once you're happy with the way that it looks, all you need to do is highlight and then just attach to your card. So for my next one, I've got a letter and this is just the font Aquitica? I don't know. I'll put it in the description below. I can't say that. And all I've done is just change the style to bold. And I'm also going to change the colour so I can see it a bit better. And then I'm going to start, I'm just going to arrange and centre back. And I'm going to start adding some of my pieces in so that it takes on the shape of that letter and I'm going to have a mixture of pop-ups and also flat images as well so some flat hearts some flat stars maybe some circles just different shapes in there so once you've filled your letter up as much as you can you've got two choices you can either attach everything to your letter or you can remove your letter and attach everything that way it's completely up to you so I've got a stencil font here which is quite literally called stencil and I will be showing you on another video in fact I can show you quickly on here so if I want a text like this so let's do the name okay so I don't want to lose the inner of my O or my A so nice and easy and simple to do if we go to shapes and we get a square and exactly as we've been doing we're going to create a sort of matchstick and again you do want it to be a reasonable width because obviously if you're going to be playing with the size of your text you're going to have to take into account that if you start reducing your text down your space is going to reduce as well. 
So with the O, I quite like the idea of having it sort of in the middle there. We can get another one and create it for the A. So if I hide the name and I just weld those two together and I bring the name back and I then slice very crudely I've then created a stencil so I won't lose my inner of my O or my A. Obviously I do it a lot neater but for today I'm going to use a stencil font. And then all I'm going to do with this one is highlight and again just attach. We can then go to make it. I'm going to cut both of these out using American Crafts cardstock which is my absolute favourite at the moment. So we can then go to continue. amazing do these look they look absolutely brilliant it seems like it's a lot but once you understand what you're doing it does become really easy I promise anyone's got any questions or queries please do put them in the comments below and I'll see you all again very soon bye